This will be Jonas' uh, second lecture on the semicircle law. Hi, everybody. Sorry, just a sec here. Ah, these are harder to get at. Let me just put it there. Okay, so first of all, I'm sorry. This is starting a little late. <laughs> I got on the wrong bus, and I was told that I had to get off in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so I'm a little short of breath, too, because I ran here. Uh, all right, so let's see where we were yesterday in our exploration of the semicircle laws. Recall the notation. So we have a matrix W, a random matrix W, defined as Wij. Uh, all the entries are centered. And the um, second moment uh, of the off-diagonal entries is 1. So the, the variance is 1. Um, yesterday, the assumption was that there are moments of all kinds for all the variables. Okay, so the moments are bounded. Today, we will remove that. Uh, but let me remind you that we're not actually working with W. We're working with a scale matrix W bar, which just represents essentially what it does is it puts the eigenvalues of W almost on a compact set, asymptotically on a compact set. But we'll see. The object of study is the empirical spectral distribution which is defined as being the average of the delta functions uh, at the eigenvalues of the matrix W bar, sorry, W bar, okay? So this is the notation that we used yesterday. And we proved yesterday the following two facts. We showed that if we average, so if you take the expectation over both the distribution f of w, sorry, it's not f of w bar, I should have put f sub w bar. So let me just <laughs> make a note of that. Wherever you see it, f of w bar actually means f sub w bar. It's a distribution. It's the aforementioned distribution. So if you take the expectation with respect to w bar and f of w bar of the monomial x to the k, that's the same thing as looking at the um, average, 1 over n, of the expectation over w bar of the trace of w bar to the power k. And that goes to 0 if k is odd, and it goes to the Catalan number for k over 2 if k is even. This is what we did, what the, the bulk, I should say, of what we did yesterday. We showed that the moments converge to those of the semicircle, and these are the moments of the semicircle. Moreover, also yesterday, we showed concentration of um, f of w bar, or the, the, the moments uh, with respect to w bar of f of w bar around their uh, expected values. So we showed the following thing. The variance with respect to w bar and f sub w bar of x to the k, which is the same thing as 1 over n squared times the variance over w bar of trace of w bar to the k, that object goes to 0 for all k. That's what we showed. In fact, we showed that it's of the order of 1 over n squared. So in other words, if you want this piece here, just the variance bit, is order 1. And that makes the whole thing order 1 over n squared, which goes to 0 as n goes to uh, infinity because k is fixed for any k. These are the facts that we showed yesterday. And from this, um, we concluded that the moments of the ESD, so F sub W bar, which are these objects, 1 over N trace of W bar to the K, uh, is the same as uh, the expectation, as its expectation. Uh, and it goes to 0 or CK over uh, 2 asymptotically as n goes to infinity, depending on the parity of k. So maybe I shouldn't have put exactly equal. I should have put similar, as in it's asymptotically the same. Okay, Concentration, that's what we showed. OK. So today we will show that because the moments are concentrated, this means that actually f of w bar itself converges weakly in probability to the semicircle law. We'll do this by a combination of Weierstrass 
and bounding or do, doing some sort of a spilling bound. So we, we will bound the probability that the eigenvalues of the matrix spill over some compact set. Okay? Um, and that's part of what we will be doing today. Okay, so let's first establish a couple of very simple facts. One of them is that C sub k is less than or equal to 4 to the k for all k. Um, I just realized I don't have a, oh, I do have a watch, never mind. All right, we're good. So the Catalan number for k is less than or equal to 4 to the k for all k. So how do we show that? It's actually not hard to do, it just follows from the definition of the Catalan number. Remember, C sub k is 1 over k plus 1, 2k choose k. Um, a very quick and dirty bound will tell us the following things. Uh, it will tell us that 2k choose k is smaller than the sum of all the binomial coefficients corresponding to power 2k, and that is what? 2 to the 2k. So this whole business is actually less than or equal to 2 to the 2k over k plus 1. Okay? No uh, big deal here. And of course, this is just 4 to the k over k plus 1. So this is a very, very simple-minded bound. It's going to be sufficient for our purposes. And the second thing that I want to recall <coughs> <clears throat> I was told to protect the microphone if I'm going to cough. I forgot it. Sorry about that. Uh, so the other thing to remember is the Weierstrass approximation theorem, which says the following thing, roughly. Given any epsilon greater than zero in some function that is continuous and has support on a compact interval i, there exists a polynomial p sub epsilon Mostly I will talk of it as being P, but you have to keep in mind that it actually depends on the epsilon that we choose. So P or P sub epsilon, such that F of X minus P sub epsilon of X in absolute value is less than epsilon uniformly does on, uh, on this compact set I. Okay? What happens outside of this, we don't really care. What happens in practice is that this polynomial is going to blow to infinity very quickly outside of the interval i. But what we're interested for it to happen is that on the interval i and on the interval i alone, the difference between the polynomial and this function, which has compact support, is very small, uniformly very small. That's a Weierstrass approximation uh, lemma or theorem. Oops, sorry. Ah. Okay. All right. So now, Let's go back to looking at f sub w bar and think of it as a distribution which is defined by the values that it takes on various functions. Continuous functions, functions with compact support, Lipschitz functions, so there, there's a um, number of classes of functions on which it is sufficient to know what f of w bar is or that it converges to something in order to be able to conclude um, that it converges in distribution. So, let's take a look at continuous functions g. Uh, now, I'm going to denote that by the uh, inner product. So when I write f w bar g, this is going to be essentially, if you want, the expected value of g with respect to the distribution f of w bar, right? So you can think of it like this, or you can think of it as being uh, 1 over n summation i equals 1 to n g of lambda sub i of w bar. Okay, so far so good? That's what it is, okay? All right, so now let's look at the following 
function, which is not quite continuous, but we can, uh, we can consider f of w uh, bar with respect to it. So suppose that instead of looking at the monomial x to the k, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the absolute value of x and raise it to the power k, and then multiply it with the characteristic function of the set, absolute value of x is bigger than 5. So I just want to look at what happens uh, with when I want to sum, essentially, or do, do the average of just those eigenvalues, or the powers of those eigenvalues of w bar, which are bigger than 5. Is that clear? That's what this is. Okay, it's the average of those eigenvalues that are bigger than 5. Suppose now that's bigger than epsilon. I, I want to look at the probability of this event, the probability that this happens. Well, as we know, this is going to be immediately bounded, this is Markov's inequality, by 1 over epsilon times the expectation over w bar of the same thing. Okay? And that, that should be clear, because essentially what we're doing is we're lower bounding. We're saying that uh, this expectation is actually going to be um, because f of w bar is atomic, is going to be a sum, and you're just taking certain terms, and you're actually, over, moreover, you're lower bounding them. Okay? So this is this, is this equal inequality here. And now I claim that if I just forget about the 1 over epsilon and look for a bound for this expectation here, that is going to be less than this. And the reason is simple. So let me write the inequality that I want to show here. E w bar, f w bar, x, oops, to the k. I write very enthusiastically, which makes every board shake. Okay, x is bigger than 5. Oops, uh, like this. Um, I will write it as <coughs> times 5 to the k. I want to show that this is less than or equal to the entire expectation, but now it's not the expectation of f w bar absolute value of x to the k. It's the expectation of f w bar x to the 2k. And it should be easy to see why this has happened. This is essentially conditional expectation. I'm looking at the expectation of the whole thing. I split it into the expectation if the variable is smaller than or equal to 5. And I ignore that completely. And I add to it the, probab the expectation um, that the uh, variable is bigger than, uh, or sorry, conditional on the fact that the um, uh, variable is bigger than or equal to 5 and I lower bound that. Is that clear? I've forgotten a term, and I've lower bounded the other. I've, I've used the fact that I have x to the 2k here, and I take x to the k of it, conditional on the fact that um, uh, x is bigger than 5, 5 to the k is going to be less than x to the k. So this here, is going to be less than or equal to the expectation um, uh, over w bar of x to the 2k, given this. And that means that I forget the rest of the expectation, okay, the, the other term in the expectation. Is that clear? You can convince yourselves of it if you uh, just write what, this, uh, what these things are, essentially integral with respect to w bar, you know, whatever that means, um, of um, summation of g, so summation of uh, absolute value of x to the k times 5 to the k is less than or equal to x to the 2k, and you integrate that over the entire domain, not just over um, x to the k, it's positive, okay? It's positive everywhere. Okay, so that explains the second inequality here. And now if you put these two together, what do you get? You get that the probability that um, f of w bar in a product with uh, absolute value x to the k over the interval where absolute value of x is bigger than 5 is bigger than epsilon, so the probability of this event. 
is less than or equal to 1 over epsilon times 1 over 5 to the k times this expectation. But this expectation, we know what it goes to. It roughly goes to c to the k. Okay? To, sorry, to c sub k, the Catalan number. So maybe I should have here a c sub k minus epsilon over 2 or something like that. Okay? Or plus epsilon over 2. Um, I can certainly take n large enough for, for uh, this to be as close as what I wrote as I want. And the bottom line is that that is essentially like 1 over epsilon times 4 to the k over 5 to the k. And what's the most important thing about this number here is that as k goes to infinity, this goes to 0. And why we have the indicator function on the right hand side there? Uh, no, I shouldn't have that here. You're right. Sorry about that. This is a mistake. Thank you. There should be no indicator function here. Very, very right. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so Note that what this is saying is that if W bar is almost surely compactly, su compactly supported in minus 5.5, five, because if you had some remnants, some, some non-zero mass outside of minus 5.5, five, 5 is bigger than 1, you would see that. You would see that. You would see that here. Okay? Because it would be some large contribution here, uh, and the probability of this being, being bigger than epsilon would not as k goes to infinity, would not go to zero, would go to something else. Okay. So now, let's take a look at um, the approximation that we're going to, to do. Suppose I take some g, a compact function. Uh, ooh, I have lots of typos here. There's no such thing as bigger, bigger, it's just bigger. There's only one inequality sign here. Um, so for any g compact function with support in minus 5, 5, com compactly uh, supported and continuous, given some epsilon bigger than 0, there exists, by Weierstrass, a polynomial p is equal to p epsilon. I'm going to drop the epsilon dependence just because it makes my life easier, such that the absolute value of p of x minus g of x is less than epsilon over 8 uniformly on minus 5, 5. The degree of this polynomial is, of course, epsilon dependent, it's finite. So now suppose that I want to look at um, sigma being the semicircle distribution. Sorry. Ah, my phone is here. Okay. And I want to look at, specifically, this difference. Uh, I want to look at the difference between the uh, inner product of fw bar with g and sigma with g. I want to look at the probability that this difference is bigger than epsilon. There should be an absolute value here. Uh, is bigger than epsilon. What's the probability that this is bigger than epsilon? If I can show that the probability that this is bigger than epsilon um, is less than epsilon, let's say, or some function of epsilon for any epsilon, given n large enough, it follows that actually uh, fw bar converges to sigma in distributions. Okay? So now let's split this up. How am I going to split it up? I'll split it up as follows. So I will assume that instead of g, I'm subtracting off p. Okay? Um, maybe I should do this step by step because there are three terms there, and it may be confusing. So let's see what I'm doing. So I would like to apply, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a triangle inequality. So the probability, I'm going to look at the following first. I'm going to look at the following absolute value. Fwg minus sigma g is less than or equal to fwp minus a p, sorry, sigma p, plus um, f w 
Um, let me see. Um, blah, 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 blah. P minus FW um, G plus sigma P minus sigma G. Okay, now this is easy. This part right here um, is going to be majorized, it's going to be bounded from above by the biggest difference between P and G on the interval minus five five because sigma is um, compactly supported. So this is going to be less than or equal to uh, some function of epsilon, epsilon over eight, right? So this part here is what gives us the epsilon over eight. Uh, let's see. Uh, and now I want to do um, something else. I want to, instead of looking at this, I would like to look at the expectation of f of w. So instead of, I wanted to replace sigma with the expectation of f of w. If I can do that, or no, rather, I should be able to do that because I know that in expectation, fw does converge to the semicircle distribution. Okay? So if I add a little bit more than here, plus some other, let's say, uh, O of epsilon, I can take this and transform it into a expected of fw bar. There are bars all over here, sorry about that. Is this clear? We can do this, ex this um, replacement because we know that in expectation f of w bar converges in distributions to sigma. So the difference can be made on this p can be made as, as uh, small as we please taking an appropriately large. Okay? So there's some other op uh, O of epsilon, so that explains how we get the first term. Um, now, Let me see what else uh, I want to do here. No, I think I confused myself. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so that explains the first two terms, actually. The first two terms come from here. This term, uh, ah, and this term here splits. Okay, so the, the first two terms in there come from this term, and this term here splits into, let's see, um, the part of it which is on x less than or equal to five, on which the difference between p and g is very small, and because f of w bar is a distribution, by the same reason that gave me that this is less than epsilon over eight, that part will also be less than epsilon over eight. So let me write that down. So f w bar um, p one x bigger than or equal to five plus f W bar P one X, let's say this is bigger, slightly bigger, um, less than or equal to five minus F W bar G. This is less than or equal to the first part. And then the second part, which is this difference, is going to be less than or equal to epsilon over eight for the same reason that this is less than or equal to epsilon over eight. Okay? We're averaging with respect to some distribution, but we're taking an average of a function which in absolute value is small, therefore its average is going to be small. Okay, um, okay. so that, ex oops. How did I get back to there? Okay, so this explains, maybe we don't have an epsilon over eight here, maybe we have some other kind of epsilon. 
two epsilon, let's say. But the bottom line is that we have these three, we have these three pieces here, and the rest of it is, um, is small. So now let's see, I claim that the probability term uh, on each uh, right hand side is going to be appropriately, uh, is going to be appropriately bounded um, by, by some function of epsilon, maybe not exactly epsilon over four. So why is this true? Why, first of all, why does the following, the first one, the first bound, why uh, is this going to be small? Some O of epsilon. Well, it's very simple. P is a polynomial. P is finite degree. And we just show that the uh, last, last lecture, actually, we showed that if P were a monomial, then this essentially converges to zero as n goes to infinity. So what, all we're doing is we're just taking a linear combination of things that go to zero. It's a finite combination. Therefore, we can always make it, by taking appropriately uh, large n, as small as we please. Is that clear? I'm sorry, because of the light, I can't actually get a lot of feedback from you because I don't see you. <laughs> so uh, if, the, if you have questions, please, please ask, okay? So anyway, this is why this being a linear combination of monomials, of, of monomial terms, each of which will go to zero, we can make it as small as we please by taking an appropriately large. The second bit, is also going to be, um, uh, can, can be made as small as we please by taking an appropriately large because we know that the expected value of f of w bar with respect to w bar converges in distribution to sigma. Okay, we know that. And then the rest, for, for the rest, um, the, which I wrote wrong here, the uh, expectation that um, the, is the integral of the, this polynomial over x bigger than five. Um, shoot. Okay, suppose instead of taking five, I were to take some larger value here. A larger value of five, like 10,000, okay? Um, then everything I wrote here can be made as small as we please. And everything that we made here is going to be um, made uh, as I wrote it, except with that larger value of five uh, plugged in. And so I can conclude that this is also as small as I want to make it by, because four over that larger value of five is gonna be arbitrarily small. Sorry, I, may, I used five, I shouldn't have used five. I should have used some other value. But the bottom line is that by choosing five appropriately large, uh, we can make this probability as small as we please. So the probability that the um, inner product of f of w bar with g minus sigma with g is bigger than epsilon, the probability of that event happening is going to be can be made as small as we please. Yes? I'm sorry, I think I'm a little slow, but can you... Uh, no, I'm probably confused you, so... On the, uh, of the expectations of W bar, F, W... So uh, you want me to go back? Second line, no, no, on this slide, second line... This, that. yes. Why is this true? No, but can you explain the notation in the... Oh, okay, so this is the level, uh, the, the distribution corresponding to the level density. Okay. So this is the distribution whose moments are the expected traces of powers, which, which we showed that they converge to um, the Catalan numbers, and therefore in distributions it converges to sigma. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Yes, uh, that's going to be a minus larger value of five, larger value of five. <laughs> Why? Yes, so this is essentially that, that I'm doing, what I'm doing, yeah. So the, the probability 
so no, it's not equal to zero. It's it's going to zero, right? It's going to zero as n goes to infinity. Uh, sorry, I did not mean to say almost surely. I meant to say actually with probability one that it's supportly compacted. Well, act it's actually almost surely, but but I'm not showing that here. Okay, so this is inf more information than I'm proving. Okay. Yes. Yes, but I did not actually show that. So I did not show that. Uh, I wrote. Uh, okay. What I wrote here can be used to prove that this is completely supported, almost surely, but not directly. I haven't shown that. Yes. Okay, let's, for simplicity, let's just consider that I, did, I never said this because it doesn't actually serve me any purpose in the proof and we can talk about it afterwards, okay? So, I shouldn't have waited so long to do my slides. Um, strike this through <laughs> and replace five by some larger value of five, like 10,000 throughout and you'll get something true, okay? The notes are going to be correct. Uh, but obviously these slides are not. I'm not using that anywhere, and so we can just talk about it uh, offline, okay? All right. So, to come back, this part was easy, this part was easy, and this part was also easy if instead of five you used 10,000 or some large value um, thereof, okay? Appropriately chosen with respect to epsilon to make four over five or 10,000 to the K, uh, smaller than epsilon square, let's say, or something like that. Okay, so the bottom line is that each and, each and every one of these terms on the right can be bounded by some function of epsilon, therefore, we can get some epsilon uh, appropriately small, such that for any epsilon smaller than that, the probability of this is less than, say, two epsilon. But that's the same thing as saying that in probability, f of w bar converges to sigma. Okay? Because it says that the um, limb soup of the probability uh, of this being bigger than epsilon is zero for any um, um, uh, for any function g. And therefore, the, uh, 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 the convergence in distribution happens. Yesterday, this worked perfectly. Today, not so much. 